Hi guys, welcome back to the NetCDF with Python series. So in the first video, if you haven't seen that, we covered how to open a data set and how to get information for a variable. In this tutorial, we're going to go back to kind of the basics of NetCDF and talk about dimensions and about variables and metadata and how to access that information. We covered a little bit of this in the first tutorial, but I didn't go through it in much depth. So we're going to go through it in depth here. So right here I have the code pulled up from the first video and I'm just going to get rid of a lot of that. So we're going to get rid of the precipitation variable that we got there. Um, we're going to get rid of um, NumPy here. We're going to keep the file name. We're going to keep the opening the data set. So this is how we open a, data, a net CDF data set. I have this one here. This is day met data, which is climate data. Um, this specific file represents precipitation for 1980. All right. Now, I'm going to zoom in just a little more there. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how you can get information about a data set. And we've done this already, but if I just type print ds, which is my NetCDF data set here, it's going to give me some information. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run this, and you'll see that down here, it gives me all this information. Um, I have the start year, the source, software version, the data version, the conventions, citations, references, and the dimensions for my different variables. So you can see I have variables here of time, this NV variable, which looks like the number of values, Y, uh, which is going to be my latitudes, and X, which are going to be my longitudes. And then it gives you the dimensions of each variable. So time is a float 32. It has a size of time, which is 1, and NV which is two, okay? And then if we look over here, I have a projection associated with it, and I have this float 32, which is latitude. It has dimensions y, x, and, which is number of rows for latitude, number of columns for longitude, float 32, longitude, y, x, float 32, precipitation, float 32, time, okay? Um, and so you can see there we have x and y. So you can see all the variables that we have there. Okay, so let's say I want to go and take a look at these dimensions in a bit more detail. Let's go ahead uh, and do that next. I'm just going to comment out uh, print ds, and the next thing we'll do is we will uh, look at the dimensions. All right, so let's just take a look at dimensions first of all. We can do that. If we do print ds.dimensions, um, we can print out the dimensions. So let's hit run and take a look at what the dimensions are here. Okay, so you can see that we've got this ordered dictionary. We have a time dimension, and it gives us the class, which is a net CDF for dimension. This gives us this, the type, and this says it's unlimited. Unlimited just means you can add to it. So if I were to have, like this is for 1980, let's say I wanted to add data for 1981, I could add that onto this time dimension and then my size would be two, okay? And we'll cover how to add data in a future tutorial, okay? And then we have our NV dimension, our Y dimension, and our X dimension. And you see here that it gives us this name. It has a name here. It gives us the name and the size. So we have a size two, we have a size one, 8,000, 7,000, okay? Now we can print this out a little nicer if we want to. We can go loop through dimensions. So if we go for dimension dim in ds.dimensions.values, then we can print the dimension. And I'm going to comment this out here. And let's go ahead and click run. Okay, and you can see that printed out the same thing but it didn't print it as a, as a dictionary. It just printed out each individual uh, dictionary element here. Okay, and so we can access those dimensions in the same way. All right, I'm going to comment these lines out now, and let's take a look uh, at the variables associated with this NetCDF data set. And that's really interesting. Those variables are the things that we're going to want to get, that are the things we're going to want to write. So we'll take a look at those now. And just like the dimensions, the variables are stored in a dictionary. So I can go for var in ds 
dot dimension. Oh, well, let's, let's start out. Sorry, let's start out, and let's do print ds dot variables. Okay, we'll print this out and see what it gives us. So we're gonna print that out. I'm gonna zoom in here, and we'll go up to the top. You can see this is a long thing here, but we have an ordered dictionary. And the first thing is time bands. So this tells us the time variables. You can see it has, it's a float 32, name is time bands, and it has the size, time rows, and V columns. So that would be one row and columns, okay? So the current shape, one, two, it tells us what the default fill value is, which is this really big number here. It tells us the projection um, information, the units. Oh, did I skip something here? Sorry, I think I skipped the variable. Right, sorry, I skipped the Lambert conformal conic projection variable. So that gives you the information here. Okay, and then we come down here to our next variable, latitude, gives you the size, the y and x, um, units, the long name, the standard name, okay, the shape, it gives us our fill value, and we have our longitude with our fill value, okay, so you can see that we have this listed out for all our variables, our precipitation, which has uh, three dimensions, time, y, x, okay, has a fill value of negative 9999, coordinates for latitude and longitude, which are two of our variables, gives us our projection, our missing value, um, and it gives us some other information, such as the units and the long name there, and then we have our dimension of time, which is three dimensions, only one, uh, one channel, 8,000 rows, 7,000 columns, okay? So we have all our information there. All right, let's close this down here real quick. Sorry I had that small. Um, let's say we want to access just a single variable. It's a little messy with all of them there. But let's say we know what our variables are, and we want to say print uh, ds variables. We can access it with PRCP. So let's say we want to get our precipitation variable we just put PRCP in there, and we can click Run, and now we get just our information for PRCP. And we can do this with any variable. So let's say we want time, we can hit Run, and it gives us time, okay? We can also do the exact same thing we do with dimensions, where we put this in a loop. So let's do that real quick. So we can do uh, for var in ds dot variables dot values that gives us the dictionary values print var and when we hit run here it will print out the long list again but it just won't say order dictionary at the top so you can see here we don't have an order dictionary it just prints out the information about each variable and we get a space in between so that's a little more uh, format friendly okay all right so that's how you can access the information um, in your data set. I want to show you one more thing and then we'll be done here and it goes back to kind of the information at the beginning which is we can do print ds dict with two underscores on each side. So let's get the dictionary of the metadata. Um, so I'm just going to click run here and you'll see it gives us our ordered dictionary and so we can get the start year, the source, right? And this is just information this is informative if you want to get information out of this, and so I'll, or out of the dictionary. So I'll show you what I mean here, and that is, let's say I want to know the start year. I can go print ds start year, and let's hit run, and this should print out our start year. Oh, start year not found. Oh, sorry, this is... My problem there. So when you go ds the underscore dict. Now let's try start year. Because that's right here, and that should print out 1980 for us. 
there you go. So that prints out 1980. And so if we need to use these um, to auto populate something, we can know what those variable names are and get them from the dictionary if you need to auto populate metadata. Okay. Um, so that's how you can get the information uh, from the dictionary. All right, guys, that's all I have today on NetCDF. Um, coming up next week, we'll continue with NetCDF, and we'll work some more with um, um, probably starting to create data sets next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I will post this code on the website uh, in a tutorial or blog post so that if you want to copy and paste over, uh, you can do that. And if you want to see some of this output, you can see that as well. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully we have some exciting things coming up for you here. I think pretty soon we're going to start working with pandas. I'm going to be doing some pandas data analysis. So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe if you want to see what's coming up. And thank you for your support.